this year, it gives me great pleasure to announce that such were the quality of submissions to the Microbiology Society Outreach Prize that in 2022, we were able to award the prize jointly to two winners. I'm delighted to announce the first 2022 Microbiology Outreach Prize has been awarded to John Tyrrell from the University of Swansea, nominated for his project Superbugs and how it has helped increase public awareness of the topics of microbiology, antimicrobial resistance and infection biology through their pop-up science shops. I'd like to welcome John to give his talk. In 2019, a crack engagement team was sent to their desk by an academic court for a project they didn't complete. These researchers promptly escaped from a maximum security university to the Welsh Public Underground. Today, still wanted by their PIs, they survive as engaged as a fortune. If you have an event, if no one else can help, and if you can fund them, maybe you can hire the Superbugs team. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for coming. I'm John Tyrrell from Swansea University, uh, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, my Superbugs initiative. I want to start off by saying thank you to the Society, not just for awarding us the prize, but for having me along this morning to, to, to essentially tell you about it and be the an eloquent mouthpiece for what is a much larger team behind me. Um, that intentionally cheesy video that you just watched was a video that we produced to showcase the, the output and the outcomes of one of our first projects, which I'll come to. But I just want to start by giving you an overview of what Superbugs is and what we aim to achieve. So um, we are a multidisciplinary team uh, of a microbiologist, an immunologist, and public engagement professionals from across Swansea and Cardiff University. And Superbugs, in essence, is a research-focused public engagement initiative. So we aim to increase public awareness of the microbial world in, on, and around us. And this alludes to the very name of the project. We don't mean superbugs in the traditional view of antimicrobial resistance superbugs. We mean it in the terms that all microbes are simply super. We want to improve the knowledge of AMR and antimicrobial stewardship. Uh, through education and empowerment. And then with this last point, um, public engagement projects, by their very essence, are diverse and so very difficult to standardise in regards to methodology and delivery strategy, uh, which means that getting rigorous, reproducible, and therefore more widely impactful evaluation from those projects is often very difficult. So sometimes very important lessons that could be learnt or applied are often lost or at the very least diluted. At Superbugs, we aim to try and address that in our project by taking a much, very research-focused approach, not only to our delivery strategy, but our evaluation strategies as well, to try and address those balances. So the first project that I want to highlight is our, our first project that you saw uh, highlighted in the, in the video, and that's our pop-up science shop, which took place across two weeks in the summer holidays of 2019. It was a, uh, a project funded by the Wellcome Trust ISSF Public Engagement Fund um, under the proof-of-concept stream. 
Um, in essence, what we wanted to do is evaluate the impact of delivering a microbiology and AMR educational event in a novel way to diverse public demographics, taking that engagement outside of the traditional environments of university buildings, museums, libraries, etc. I put this up because I often hear the analogy that trying to get public to engage with public engagement and science events is like herding cats, particularly if you're trying to breach out of those audiences that aren't already invested or interested in science. And that's something we wanted to try and test and try and, and, and break down. So what we did was we took over a, an empty retail unit in St David's Shopping Centre, which is the largest shopping centre in Wales, right smack dab in the, in the middle of Cardiff. Um, and we transformed it into an interactive microbiology experience. I don't know why those images aren't working. My images are frozen. <laughs> Bear with me. And my point to stop working as well. Okay, well, you can see a little bit of the transformation of the shop um, from the empty retail unit to what could be seen on the concourse. And a lot of time, focus, and resources were put in. There we go. So what you've just seen is the transformation from the empty retail unit to what the shop looked like from the central concourse and inside. A lot of time and resources were put in to this particular part of the shop uh, and for reasons that will become clear in a little while. Um, in regards to the content, um, I won't, I'm not going to give you a detailed breakdown. Um, shame, shame for, shame for plugging here, but there is a detailed breakdown in our Superbugs publication uh, in the Research for All uh, journal, so if you are interested, then please do go have a look at that. But I just want to highlight two very important uh, stations for our evaluation strategy, and that was the very first station, the welcome station, where we asked our visitors to answer three very simple benchmarking questions to gauge their understanding of antibiotics and their personal antibiotic stewardship. And they indicated their answers by simply putting pet tips into the jar they thought was the correct answer. And then our stations built up on the basic knowledge of what bacteria are, what microbiology is, where microbes can be found. A swabbing station so we could grow some of the yucky stuff that grows on children. Um, an artwork corner, a chance for children to get their hands on microscopes slowly building up their understanding and the complexity of the topic before we then moved into teaching them about what infections are, how we treat them, and the development of antibiotic resistance. And we did this primarily through gamification, adapting traditional fairground rides like um, coconut shy and, and, and ring toss. Uh, finally, station 10 was the second part of a, a major part of our, of our evaluation strategy we asked our visitors to repeat that benchmarking exercise from station one so that we could gauge the before and after responses. We also invited them to leave some further feedback on our bacterial thought tree that you can see on the bottom here. Um, there is logic behind the progression of that information. Um, the content of the shop was evolved through trial runs in schools in our local area. And what we found in these trial runs was that we were falling into the trap that a lot of engagement projects fall into, in that we were assuming a certain level of knowledge on our, on our audience that they simply didn't have. And so it was making co uh, complex topics like AMR simply unreachable for that audience. So what we did was even though our, our main theme, our main message was around AMR, we started at the very basics and built up their grounding understanding so that when we did get them to the point of talking about AMR, very close to the end of the shop, we maximised the impact of that messaging to the audience. Indulge me, if you will. I'm just going to show you some of the more interesting points of data that, that we, we got from the shop. What you see on the, on the slide here is results of our benchmarking information, uh, our benchmarking exercise. Uh, as I mentioned, the three questions that we asked were really simple, just gauging the very basic understanding of antibiotics, how 
they should be used. Uh, and what the graph shows is that in all three questions, there was a significant increase in the percentage of correct answers as the visitors were leaving the shop compared to when they entered. So we can safely assume from that that they had improved amount of knowledge or awareness through the experience of the Superbugs shop. Uh, we did also produce questionnaires, uh, those boring things that nobody ever picks up. Um, but we did actually have quite good take-up. We, from um, a total of 6,666 visitors, we got 656 questionnaires, so just under 10%, which comparatively to many projects is actually quite a good take-up. When you compare, when you consider that most questionnaires were not filled in by an individual, but a family unit, that actually increases the amount of catchment that we had from our overall attendance. And I just wanted to um, highlight some, some sort of feedback that we got from the questionnaire. Over 90% of the, uh, the visitors indicated that they had an improved knowledge of microbiology, an improved knowledge of antibiotics and antibiotic resistance, and what they can do to help fight AMR. Over 95% indicated that they found the event fun, engaging, but in, most importantly, informative. Uh, and also that the intellectual level was pitched at an appropriate, appropriate level for the, for the target audiences of, of primarily key stage two and three families. But th this is re the really interesting information that I want to focus on. And this is a question in the questionnaire um, trying to gauge how our visitors found out about the shop. Was it through social media, our website, uh, a newsletter that we sent out to local schools, or whilst they were just out shopping in the shopping centre. And what you can see, each spot indicates a day. What you can see is that for every, uh, across the 14 days, between 60 and 80% of our visitors had no prior knowledge to the shop and just stumbled upon it doing their, their general shopping. Now, what that does is indicate to us that we did achieve one of our primary aims of breaking out of just those audiences that would seek science events. The vast majority of our, um, of our visitors were actually just out on a shopping trip. When you put that together with the positive feedback and the positive impact we had on knowledge, it's painting uh, quite, a, quite a pretty picture, I think. Um, we were able to collate all of the data that we produced from quite a multifaceted evaluation strategy. And um, we're very proud to say that we were able to publish our findings in, in the paper that I shamefully plugged, uh, shamelessly plugged earlier. So if you are interested, um, please do go and have a look. It, it's half opinion piece, half methodology on how to carry out um, quite a stringent and multifaceted evaluation strategy for these types of projects. So everything was looking great, and after the publication of that paper, we, um, and through the writing of that paper, we felt confident that we had learned enough to move forward into what we planned for the next stage of the project, which was taking those delivery and evaluation strategies into areas of lower socioeconomic uh, standings to see whether it was translatable. So we planned these new live events, but sadly something unforeseen occurred.
Okay, so that second intentionally cheesy video we produced to launch this, superbugs.online. Um, obviously, due to COVID, we had to adapt uh, our plans because large in-person events was off the table for a little while. Um, and so we decided to translate what we had learned from the pop-up science shops in regards to the delivery strategy, the framing of our messages, and how we communicate those messages onto a digital ed educational tool. And this is what resulted, superbugs.online. You saw some of the main features and the most um, common, um, commonly positively evaluated features on that video. Um, this is the home page you can see here, and if you scan the QR code, that'll take you through to it. So, so please do uh, have a look at your own leisure. Uh, the project was funded by the Wellcome Trust again um, on a public engagement co-production grant. Now, um, admittedly, we didn't really do any co-production for the first Superbugs project. Other than the trials we run in local schools, it was a relatively insular project. We, we kept it in team, um, slightly, partly due to ignorance on my part about co-production. Um, but due to this, um, this new, new grant, uh, we, we teamed up with Co-Production Network for Wales, and we underwent some, some really detailed and stringent training on how to design and implement co-productive um, uh, public engagement projects. And we identified two stakeholder groups that we wanted to work with and co-produce this educational tool. It was the teachers or educators in our schools, and it was the students themselves. So, we worked with Co-Production Network for Wales to, 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 to design the project, and then Maxim Consultants were the ones that actually built the website for us at the end. Um, forgive me the crude diagram, but I wanted to sort of simplify the structure of the project for you. Um, and this is what we designed in um, collation with, uh, with the Co-Production Network for Wales. The pre-co-production preparation was working with the network and then recruiting those teacher stakeholders. Um, that was a relatively easy task because we had quite an extensive communication network through our Cardiff University School of Medicine. Uh, the co-production process involved three, sets, uh, three workshops where we worked with the teachers. We would discuss our, our ideas. They would bring their ideas to the table, their experiences of what online and in-person tools worked well, what didn't work well, etc. So we knew in what way to deliver the messages that we wanted to deliver. As you can see, the red stars are highlight evaluation. Um, again, stringent and detailed evaluation underpinned everything we did. Um, and we're currently in this post-co-production area, so I won't be talking too much about that. Um, but through our discussions with the teachers, uh, they identified some key themes that they wanted us to, to adopt and maintain throughout, throughout the, the features of the website. And that was the content had to align with the current a new flexible curriculum for Wales, which is more focused on uh, general skills and adaptability rather than tick boxes of certain topics. They wanted uh, a non-prescript content, so they didn't want lesson plans. They wanted material that could be adapted by each teacher to each bespoke uh, classroom setting. They wanted it to be inter interdisciplinary. So microbiology taught through maths, through physics, through environmental sciences, etc. Uh, and they wanted um, elements of uh, career education and, and educating the, the students on pathways into STEM careers. And, and I'm glad to say that we were able to cater for all of that. And the feedback that we got from the teachers is that we did a very good job of maintaining and keeping it aligned with all of those, those key themes that they, they identified. Um, after the first three workshops, we, along with the teachers, developed a draft version of the website, which we then gave to the teachers to to deliver in class. And we were able to get feedback on that draft website um, off hundreds of students from across Wales. And this is the sort of feedback we, we, we got, um, how they would rate certain elements of the website, whether they saw, thought something was uh, impactful on their knowledge, etc. And this then coincided also with qualitative feedback from the teachers, including um, narrations of the discussions they had with the students and also blog entries that, that still sit on our website. 
Um, part of our evaluation was, was inward looking. Um, this is a self audit tool developed by the co production network for Wales. And it is a, a sort of a self and peer evaluation tool where you look at how you develop certain aspects of your, your engagement and your co productive skills. And what you can see on the left hand side is where we started, where we, we evaluated ourselves at the start. And in most cases, we thought by the end of the project we'd significantly improved. The one area that we didn't really improve in was our forward planning, what happens after this website. But I'm glad to say that thanks for a lot of the feedback we've continued to get, we're now, we're, we're now starting to improve on that. Um, apologies for the, the awful pun, but we did experience a steep learning curve of the ongoing evaluation element of the website. It's not enough just to have the website go live and be essentially a dead interface. We wanted to keep on adding to it and keep on evaluating what we were adding. Now, what this graph shows is essentially um, digital footfall, the, the traffic on various different elements of our website. And you can see that our science emoji quiz um, and our timelines, our interactive timelines, which allow you to track infectious diseases through the ages or track scientific discoveries through the ages, were particularly popular. Um, we're also able to take a wider look at this um, and track how certain um, landmarks in the, the lifespan of the website impact our traffic. So you can see the spike in um, traffic when we launched the website, obviously. Uh, when we introduced our microbiology Wordle, there's another spike. Um, I'll come back to the Gaelic timeline. And even last month, we released a new brochure to schools and we saw another spike in, in traffic. Now, this is all great, but it is only essentially digital footfall. What we have a real shortfall of is quality feedback about what they actually think of these features. Now, at the minute, we don't know whether that is because we've simply designed the evaluation poorly or integrated the evaluation poorly, or whether it's just that, as we all find, we don't really want to spend our time filling in questionnaires. It's something we're currently looking into and trying to develop different ways that we can try and gauge that feedback, because at the minute, we, that is an area that we, think, we feel we've fallen short on. Um, we are, think, I think we're quite unique in that we're a multilingual microbiological educational tool. We're in English, we're in Welsh. We're actually the first major microbiology educational tool that is in Scottish Gaelic. And we've recently submitted uh, a grant application to fund some uh, very enthusiastic scientists to help us translate it to Irish Gaelic. We've also got some preliminary talks about germ, uh, translating it to German, Spanish, and Arabic. So, uh, very briefly, because um, you're going to have my neck, because I'm overrunning slightly, um, we're going to continue our linguistic crusades that we can increase our international impact. Uh, we currently have started international collaborations with AMR researchers so that we can play a role in the downstream impact and dissemination of their work. We have student-led projects developing hybrid superbugs workshops that integrate both the website and our in-person activities. And we're seeking funding and support for further in-person events. So if you want to get involved or collaborate, please do let, us, uh, let me know. Um, we are also franchising out. A couple of months ago, um, Rachel Etherington, who's a fantastic communications manager in Exeter, uh, run a team that run Superbugs Exeter. Um, I won't say any more about that because it's not really my story to tell, but please do check them out on Twitter. They did a fantastic job, as you can see. Um, finally, my acknowledgements. Um, obviously, again, thank you to the Society for having me along and, and awarding, not myself, but the entire Superbugs team the award. Um, so I want to thank all core Superbugs team members, past and present, and they were mostly highlighted on the videos. Um, our co-production partners across all of the projects. The army of early career researchers and students that have volunteered over the years. Without them, we wouldn't exist. Um, obviously, our funders, the Wellcome Trust and, and the British Society of Immunology in particular. Um, but I want to give a special thanks to um, my co-lead on Superbugs, Professor Matthias Ebel, um, who over the last six to 12 months, due to poor, poor health on my part, he's essentially been running the ship on, on his own. Um, and his mentorship throughout has been fantastic. So thank you very much. That's me.